After 15 years, I figured I'd finally upgrade from my old Millermatic 180 to a new Multimatic 220 welder. Of course, this welder is physically bigger in every way than the old one. So today I'm going to show you how I built this new cart for under $100. At the heart of this cheap project is a two-door filing cabinet. You can often pick these up for somewhere between free and $20. This one is 18 inches wide by 28 inches deep and 30 inches tall. And it is important that you get one with latches for the drawers, otherwise they will tend to come open on their own whenever you move the cart around. And this can cause lots of problems. To get started on all this, I put my cheap Taiwanese bandsaw to work to cut up a bunch of pieces of 2x2x250 two by two by angle, 3x3x188 three by three by angle, and some 1/8x2 flat bar. I also found some leftover expanded steel, dug out four casters, an old handle off a toolbox, and some D-ring bolts from my tickle trunk. Yes, my tickle trunk has lots of things in it, and that's very handy. I then started to prep these pieces for welding using an angle grinder with a flap disc. Because of the way some of these pieces are going to nest together, there will need to be a considerable radius ground into some of the edges, as I'm demonstrating here. I just make radiuses by eye. You could get way more technical with this if you want, but I really don't see the need. Here I am clamping the main pieces of angle iron together and beginning to square everything up. As you can see, I used the 3x3 for the ends and nested the 2x2 angle into them. This is just easier than making miter cuts and butt welding, and I'm all about easy on something like this. In fact, I'm all about easy in general. You can never have too many clamps, and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Also, to get something like this properly square, you should measure corner to corner and make these dimensions the same. I just didn't show doing this here, or maybe I didn't even do it. You know what? It's just a welding card. After a little splatter spray, which I will point out is an awesome consumable for anyone using a MIG welder, and it's ready to be burned together. If you didn't notice, I'm actually using the old welder to make the cart. That's because I don't have a cart for the new welder, which does raise the question of what came first, the welder or the cart? And yeah, okay, I'll admit it. That joke was just, just bad. I will see myself out. And don't forget to dislike and unsubscribe. So I'm going to just straight out say that there's a better way to attach casters, and that's with bolts. And that's because then you can easily replace them if they break. However, it's a lot easier, at least at the start, to just weld them on, which then may result in having to do a lot more work when you need to replace them in the future. But that would be a problem for future me, so I'm not too worried about it. Just make sure you get as much of the zinc off the casters as you can if you do this, or it won't weld very well. You know what I said about the zinc? Yeah, that smoke, flame, and the residue, that's the zinc. Ah well, at least there's absolutely nothing toxic about zinc. Also, there is definitely no way that the heat from this is bad for those bearings. With the basic frame done, it was time to close in part of the back to hold the bottles. To do this, I first cut some slits in this piece of 2x2x125 two two angle iron. I didn't get this bang on with the angle grinder, so I had to do a little cleanup with a file. And because people like to complain I don't prep mild steel well enough before MIG welding, here's a completely useless shot of me using a scotch bite roll lock to waste time and money on prep that really isn't needed. Your 70S6 is rated for use on mild mill scale. That's just totally allowable. And this is just a welding card, it's not going in the moon. And here's how that piece fits in place. I did take reasonable care to make it fit decently. And as always when clamping anything, you first need to put the clamps in a place that's obviously in the way before then pulling them all off and redoing it and putting them where you should have just put them in the first place. I then welded it all together. I like using expanded metal for any sort of shelf that doesn't have to hold anything small. That's just because it's nice to have the inevitable shop dust fall right through it. It's also pretty cheap. Doubly so in this case, because it's actually leftover scrap from another project. And of course, this just got welded into.
I added a piece of angle iron here. This is just a little bracket to help hold the gas bottles. I cut down the sharp corners of the angle iron here and then smoothed them off with a flap wheel. This is because tiny little details like this actually do make the product look nicer. And when you're making something that's honestly not that nice, these little things will help. Also, you can see that the disadvantage of adding the caster sooner rather than later is that, well, the whole thing keeps wanting to roll away on me. But wait, don't those casters have brakes? With all that done, I finally could throw the filing cabinet into the frame. And as you're about to see, it's quite the tight fit. Very tight. But tight is good, right? I mean, if you don't need a hammer to install something, then clearly it's too loose. And I mean, hammers are your friends anyway, so you might as well use them. I then made an upper bracket for locating the gas cylinders. This started with just drilling two holes in some flat bar, and then I welded a small piece of angle iron into it like I did with the other bracket. The edges of this were also given some nice little radiuses, because it really does make it better. Happy little radiuses. I laid out and drilled holes in the back of the file cabinet for this bracket and the D-rings. Step drills work great for sheet metal like this. They tend to not leave a terribly burred edge nor drill triangular shaped holes. You generally aren't looking for triangular shaped holes, but if you are, a regular drill bit does do a good job of that in sheet metal. Since I was working alone, as is almost always the case, since I have no friends or something like that, in order to tighten the bolts for the bracket, I stuck some vice grips on them to stop them from being able to turn completely. With the drawer out, I was able to barely squeeze in enough to start the nuts on the bolts. It was definitely tight. Alternatively, a guy could have used riv nuts or some other sort of blind insert, but I didn't have any of the right ones on hand, so I didn't do this. As you can see, just the weight of the vice grips actually was good enough to get the nuts to tighten, even though I used nylocks. For the D-rings, I just wired them together and that was enough to stop them from spinning. I used a cut down ratchet strap to secure the bottles. Chains would work too, but I find I always have millions of these old damaged ratchet straps around that could always be cut shorter for this sort of application, but it's hard to make them longer. For the handle, again I just drilled some holes and bolted it on. Nothing fancy here. And yes, the handle works, in case anyone doubted me on that. It would be possible to screw something like that up. Uh, I wouldn't put it past myself. I wanted the welder to be reasonably secure to the cart, at least enough that it couldn't be knocked off by accident. Also the top was a little flimsy under the weight of the welder without any added support. So I started by drilling some holes in the top of the cabinet, and I cut out some little tabs from 1 inch flat bar, which I welded onto some 3 quarter inch angle iron in a definitely not super beautiful way. But don't worry, nobody will see this but me. Well, and anyone who watches this video I guess. And this is the finished product. I made up some little 3 quarter inch angle iron feet to secure the welder in place. And with the power of video editing, I could show you what they look like installed with the welder. But first I just had to get them and the supports finger tightened in place so I could locate and drill the side holes. Then I could really squeeze myself in there and get everything properly tight. And uh, yeah, this was more of a squeeze than the time before. This was pretty much at the limit of my squeezing. I'm actually quite happy with how well this holds the welder. It's very secure. But in the event that you needed to, you can take it off just by picking it straight up. It's a bit of a grunt, but very doable. At this point, I could have called the whole project done, but the Multimatic by design has a whole ton of attachments, leads, cords, and etc. that go with it. And I wanted a way to hang these up so that they could be kept tidy, but still available for use. So I cut some random scrap schedule 40 pipe and half lengthwise, and because I did such a horrible job of this, I then spent a ton of time cleaning up that edge with a flap disc to try and get it sort of square and straight. Something that I don't own, and probably should buy, or actually definitely should buy, is a universal bender. I seem to be often working around not having one, which is exactly what I'm doing here by v-notching this pipe so I can bend it by hand. I then welded up the notches and made myself a silly little jig so I could weld everything together reasonably straight. You might notice the angles on this are all a little odd, but trust me, that's by design. Or at least that's the story I'm sticking with. A couple more pieces were bent up and welded in. Again, there's nothing high-tech going on here. 
but this is a welding cart and not a space shuttle. Then I just threw the thing on there and attached it with some hose clamps. It's a simple way to mount it and does not permanently modify the welder. Oh, and you gotta give it the ol' that's not going anywhere tug. Or else it will fall off. That's science. This was really bothering me, so I scraped off this sticker that demands I turn off the lights. I guess I just don't handle authority very well. I then filled the drawers up with a bunch of stuff, and I then found out entirely by accident that the brackets for the bottles actually work great for holding TIG filler rod. Sometimes you just get lucky. As a last little thing, I tracked down some little rubber caps to put over the ends of the pipe that make the rack. I was kind of afraid I might impale myself on one of these at some point. Or, you know, maybe put my eye out. Then I could look like a pirate, I guess. That would be kind of cool. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it at least gave you some ideas for your own welding cart build. Like I said, this one isn't perfect. There's definitely a few things that'll get tweaked over time. Or I might decide I just don't like it and scrap it out completely for a different design. Either way, thanks for watching and hopefully you'll go check out some of my other videos.